Please be seated. You are about to enter into a union of which God himself is the author, in which our divine Savior has consecrated in a special manner, giving, it, giving to it a character of sanctity, which places it among the holiest in institutions of religion. He knew full well the dangers by which we are surrounded and the weakness of our nature, which requires a continual encouragement in the discharge of the duties that have been imposed upon us. For this reason, he has annexed to the worthy reception of this sacrament peculiar graces, which dispose the married couple to respect the sacred engagement which they have formed and enabled them to surmount the various obstacles and difficulties they may meet with in the discharge of the duties of life. The present occasion, then, is one of great interest to you both, nor can you view it in any other light than as the beginning of the most import, important era of your lives, and most intimately connected with your temporal and eternal welfare. Before entering this union, therefore, I will warn you of a great danger which you will have to face, a great evil that will tempt you. There are many cases in, in the traditional movement of people who have everything and who throw everything away. Many of these people are parents. And these parents don't necessarily lose the faith. Sometimes they do, but not always. But these parents do lose something. They are practically guaranteed to lose their children. When the parents fall away from the duties of their state in life, the most important being the education of children, they leave their children with a choice. Ch their children have to choose between two paths in life, one hard and one easy. Their children have to make this decision with limited training, with weak wills, incomplete educations, and with no help from those who should help the most. And what choice do the children of these parents make? Nature chooses the path of least resistance, and it is fallen nature that most controls the children. With rare exceptions, the children, not just one or two, but most, if not all, of the children choose the easy path. They choose the path that their parents, with their bad example, have shown to them and are themselves taking. Their children are, however, simpler than their parents in many cases, and do not go halfway down the path, but the full way, unhindered by the complexities of human respect, unwilling to lead complicated double lives, but run down the path laid before them, they apostatize. You do not want to be this parent, these parents. But what is the cause of this calamity? What is the cause of these children choosing to run to hell rather than to struggle for heaven? And who are these parents? These parents are those who do not follow the advice of the priests but have embraced, embraced liberalism. Liberalism is the enemy. Liberalism is an affirmation, it's a doctrine of the absolute independence of the individual and of the social reason. It throws off and rejects all authority. It is in direct opposition with everything Catholic. One cannot be a Catholic parent and a liberal parent because no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will sustain the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Liberalism is mammon. It is the creed of the world and the call sign of the devil. Liberalism is a disease. It is a cancerous arrogance which blinds the victim to all advice. 
This liberalism shows itself in every facet of one's life. Not at first, however, as with all prides, liberalism starts small. It starts as a thought, as an idea. And this dangerous thought festers and grows like a tumor. It multiplies and grows out of control until it finally consumes the victim. It shows itself in speech, in dress, in one's associates. It is liberalism which destroys Catholic families. And this destruction begins with the parents. You must avoid worldliness. Because of worldliness, parents are more easily drawn to liberal ideas. And it is so easy to be liberal. We are surrounded by a society which is in every way liberal. Even the, even the conservatives of today are liberal. And so these worldly liberal parents sink more and more into liberalism because of the companionship of all the other liberals of the world. You will not have many friends in the world. You will have your small circle of friends in the traditional movement. If you make friends of worldlings, you will become a worldling. Liberalism is worse than leaping from a building just because everyone on the roof thinks that it's a good idea. For when you leap from the building by embracing liberalism, you do not fall onto concrete and asphalt, but you leap into the depths of burning hell and you drag your children with you. Liberalism cannot be hidden. You can't live a double life. It will make itself known to others and it will especially expose itself to your children. And they will become liberals and it will be your fault. When you have a child, you are handed a most precious gift. You are given by God an immortal soul, a soul which you must educate in the love of God and lead to heaven. The primary end of marriage, as you have been instructed, is twofold. First, the procreation, and secondly, the education of children. Today, you are taking upon yourselves the most grave obligation to educate any children that God may give you. Do not take this responsibility lightly. This is more important than the procreation of children. Anyone can procreate, but it takes a Catholic, a good Catholic with the sacramental grace of matrimony to sufficiently educate a child. A parent is not merely the boss of the child. From the child's point of view, the parent is God. And we know from the catechism that the parents truly do take the place of God with regard to the children. From his parents, the child receives everything. The child receives shelter, clothing, food. But the most important thing the child receives is education. And the most important education is that on God and the things of God. We read in the book of Ecclesiasticus, He that feareth the Lord honoreth his parents, and will serve them as masters that brought him into the world. And it is only after the child honors and serves his parents because of fear of the Lord that the parents will be able to educate the child. Liberal parents will not be able to educate children well. You must be striving for sanctity if you are to take God's place. Now, more than ever, children must be educated in the faith and protected from the evils of this world and prepared to survive in the onslaught of sin and filth that they will be faced with when they grow older. Do not leave your children defenseless against the snares of the devil and allurements of the world and the rebellion of their own flesh. Remember that your example will be the greatest teacher of your children. If you are liberal, you will educate your children to be liberals. But if you are saintly and strive for sanctity, you will educate your children to be saints. When you die, 
And when you are judged, you will be judged not only on your own sins, but also on the sins of your children, insofar as you are the cause of those sins. And you will be the cause of them if you are liberal and undisciplined. Think of this often and think on it seriously. If you do so, if you do think of it often, you will become more attuned to the example that you set forth for the little ones in your charge. Remember the words of our blessed Lord, it were better for him that a millstone were to be hanged around his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should scandalize one of these little ones. Now today is a day for rejoicing. It is a day of true and holy joy. Marriage is a great thing. It is a great sacrament, and you should celebrate it. Our Lord went to a marriage feast himself. He went with his blessed mother. And it was there that he performed his first miracle. The miracle was performed to prevent the embarrassment of the couple. But bear in mind what this marriage means. It means that you are going to war. You are going to war against the world. You will be battling the whole liberal world, not only for your own survival, but for the survival of your children and your children's children. How well you fight the battle, how well you fight the battles to come will determine how well you will raise your children and how well your children will fare in their own battles against the world. Be brave in this struggle and be wise. Humbly ask and follow the advice of the priests. Read good books and pray with your family so that your family may survive. There is no more efficacious weapon in this war than the rosary. The rosary, if said daily, will raise a wall of protection around you and your family and will ensure your survival. Our Lady will not abandon the family who faithfully recites her Psalter. If you wish to survive, pray the rosary. If you are tempted by the world and liberalism, pray the rosary. If you think you are tainted with liberalism, pray the rosary. Liberalism wants to chain you to the world. Your rosaries will chain you and your family to heaven. Pray, pray, and never stop praying. Today, the Church prays the office of the Blessed Virgin. Join in this prayer on your first day as a married couple by praying the rosary together. Pray that God may keep you from liberalism. Beg that you may always use the sacramental graces that will be given you at the time of need in your marriage. And pray that you may educate your future children to be good, God-fearing Catholics. With confidence, then, in the promises of our blessed Savior, who condescended to honor with his divine presence the happy nuptial of Cana, Invite him to come and preside on this occasion also to bless the contract you are about to enter into and to render it by his grace a true emblem of that sacred union which exists between him and his church, a union of sentiment and action founded in virtue and the love of God. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.